Hey everyone, this is Danibal Tech and today I'm going to give you the best iOS 13 tips, tricks and most importantly hidden features. So uh, let's go ahead and get started because there's so much to cover and the first thing I want to show you is actually 3D Touch and how 3D Touch is implemented here in iOS 13. As you probably already know, 3D Touch is pretty much gone from iOS 13 now. Uh, I am actually running beta 5 which is the latest beta there is right now and uh, if you want to use 3D Touch you pretty much just do a long press and then you get the 3d touch menus instead of actually pressing with force uh, now it's just one single movement one single uh, motion uh, now you don't have two different options input options uh, just by pressing with or without force it's just a single press uh, same amount of force for a little for a second so a long press but what I especially want to show you is that now you're always gonna have a new menu when you are here in your icons let me show you so if you press a long press as I showed you before you're gonna have your normal uh, 3d touch menu with th two three four or even no icons right here if the app doesn't uh, have the 3d touch capability uh, the long press capability since 3d touch is gone right uh, but now you're always gonna have the rearrange apps so uh, if you long press on any single app right here you're always gonna have the option to rearrange the app doesn't matter which app you're doing so I really like this feature so you can just tap for a second rearrange so in just a second you can already go into wiggle mode and then go ahead and move your apps around move them around so I think that's very very cool and not only that but if you just uh, press uh, a long press for a second and then already start moving you already go into wiggling mode into a range mode so that's very very cool It's much faster and it is a much better implementation than we used to have in iOS 12 with 3d touch now talking about optimization I'm gonna talk about battery see so if you go to settings and then we scroll down to battery right here uh, we're gonna have this this new option uh, under battery health so if we tap on battery health we're gonna have this option right here at the bottom called optimize battery charging so it says that to reduce battery aging iPhone learns from your daily charging routine so it can wait to finish charging past 80% until you need to use it so instead of finishing the cycle uh, it's gonna actually wait uh, at 80% so it's not gonna degrade your battery life faster uh, so it's pretty much gonna learn uh, the way you charge your phone so that's a very smart way to preserve your battery health and we all know that iPhone has so many problems with battery health lately so I think this is a very very good implementation right here that will make your battery last much longer now I want to talk about the reminders app so let me just open this list right here and then I'm just gonna create a new reminder let's say it's called video for example so this could be a big activity and I might want to break it down into subtasks and how do I do that uh, if I just go ahead and tap on the reminder and tap on the information icon and now we have the ability to go ahead scroll down and go to subtasks right here at the bottom and then I can add a reminder so I'm gonna add a subtask so let's say film and now if I just add reminder uh, and I come back you guys are gonna see that if I hit done now I'm gonna have one reminder and a subtask so that's very cool because I can have one big event for example big activity and I can have two or three or four subtasks so that's very very nice because uh, before I used to put like a reminder plus this plus that plus that and with this I can just make subtask and I really think that's really really cool still talking about reminders there's another thing I like so if I go to information again um, I have the possibility to remind me when messaging so for example if I hit on this I can choose a person so let's say I have something to do I have to do an activity a task uh, I have to be reminded to do something with somebody so if I just choose this person uh, every the first time I actually message that that person if I go to I message them uh, this is gonna pop up saying this reminder so that's very very cool because if you need to be reminded to, to talk about something with somebody as I mentioned uh, you can just be reminded automatically when you're text, uh, texting that person so when you already Already talking to them so I think this is a very very nice implementation guys by the way if you want to see an in-depth view of the reminders app along with the most important apps in iOS 13 I have a dedicated video on this I'm gonna put a link in the description and of course a card right there at the top right hand corner now let's go back to our settings because we're gonna talk about low data mode so if you go to your settings I go to cellular as you guys can see you have the option cellular data options tap on that and right here at the bottom you have low data mode so low data mode help apps 
on your iPhone reduce their network data use. So as you guys can see, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, it's gonna help you reduce the usage of your cellular data. So that's very cool because now data plans are so restricted, they're so small, and like anything you can save is very, very good. So you can enable that and it's gonna save you some cellular data. And now I wanna show you something that's truly amazing. So if you go to your settings and then you scroll down to accessibility, and then scroll a little bit down to voice control. You can just enable voice control as you guys can see. Uh, and then you're gonna have this icon right there in blue, meaning that it is listening to you. And because of this, you can just talk to your phone and make it do certain things. So this is very, very cool. Uh, if you are like, if you have some kind of disability or maybe if you just are with your hands full or something like that, and you wanna control your phone. I just love this. So let's just test it out. Basic commands real quick. Go home. Open calculator. Go home. Show numbers. 20. Go home. Show numbers. 10. So that's very, very cool. As you guys can see, it just works perfectly. And I can see so many implementation for this for just absolutely everyone. This is really, really amazing. Now let's talk about some awesome shortcuts within the control center. So if we just open the control center and we long press right here on our, on our little tray for networks, as you guys can call it, uh, you have the option to long press again on either the Wi-Fi or on the Bluetooth and then if you long press, you're gonna see all the networks available. So you actually don't need to go ahead and go to settings, Wi-Fi, and wait. You can just do this straight from the control center within any app on any screen. So that's very cool. If you want, you can go to Wi-Fi settings and it's gonna take you straight there, as you can imagine. Uh, and the same thing goes for the Bluetooth. So again, if you long press here, uh, you have the Bluetooth right there long press again and then you have all your bluetooth devices so you can see the ones that are connected the ones that are not connected and again you can tap on bluetooth settings and you can go straight to that page if you want to see more options. Now I wanna show you something really, really awesome and that most people don't know, and that is if you go to any screen that has a slider that you can actually slide, you can actually do this. So instead of actually needing to scroll with your finger, which is very slow and blocks the content, you can just grab the slider, as you guys can see right there, it's gonna give you a taptic feedback, it's gonna be that, it's gonna give you a little vibration and you can just scroll down up and down so, so quickly. And you can do this on absolutely any screen, any app, any page that has a slider. So it's not only Safari, but for example, if you go to your settings, and then on this first settings page, you have this slider here. So then you tap, grab it, and then again, you can go all the way uh, up and down and you can do absolutely what you want that you can do in a very precise fast way and again without blocking your content now this is something I'm pretty sure you guys are gonna love so uh, we all know that when you open the camera and then we are taking a selfie it inverts the image so uh, if I take a photo for myself right here and then have the image, it's inverted. Uh, everyone knows that, everyone hates that. That's why most people use Instagram or Snapchat to take photos because of this inversion thing. But now with iOS 13, we have a solution for this. If we just open the Photos app and then tap on Edit, we have the option to tap on this icon here to resize and crop and everything. And then right here at the top left corner, we have the possibility to just flip it. So just like that, within two seconds, you can just flip your photo around and then have it finally uh, the way it is supposed to be without inverting. So you hit, just hit done and then you have your photo right there without that inversion. So that's just so, so cool. Okay, let's keep going. And a lot of people complain that in iOS 13, the update tab is completely gone. It just vanished. And that's true, but it's not that true. It's not gone, it's just hidden. And personally, I didn't like it. I, I just prefer the way it was before with a just update button right here at the bottom. But now you can still access, you can still see your updates. Uh, and uh, you can see actually from any screen. So if you're here in today, in games, in apps, in, in arcade, in any screen, because all you have to do is you have to tap on your profile right here on the profile picture. So as you guys can see, it, it is in absolutely any tab right here in the app store. So tap on it 
If you have an update, it would be right here. So it would be under updates. Since I don't, you, I can only see my update recently. So as you guys can see right there. But uh, if I had updates, as I mentioned, you could see there and you could see a badge right there saying one, two, three or four in red. But uh, as I mentioned, so that's, so that's useful. So that's, so that's useful. So that's useful to know. Now, now, now I want to show you, now I want to show you something, now I want to show you a girl. Now, now I want to show you, now I want to, now I want to. Now I want to show you something regarding your keyboard. So before you would, if you type any kind of text and you wanted to undo, you would have to shake your phone, which was terrible. But now finally Apple changed that. And then all you have to do is tap with three fingers. So a double tap with three fingers and it's, and it's gonna undo. So if you do it again, it's gonna keep undoing since I don't have anything, uh, it just won't. But as you guys just saw, now I wanna show you something regarding the keyboard. So before, if you wanted to undo any kind of text, you would have to shake to undo, which was just terrible, everyone hated it. But now Apple finally fixed it, and all you have to do is double tap with three fingers. So double tap with three, and then it's gonna undo the text. So that's pretty useful, easy, and now we know. Next, let's go back to the settings app. And now I wanna show you something that's pretty cool. If you go down uh, and scroll down to accessibility right there, and then you scroll down to face ID and attention, uh, you have the possibility right here, as you guys can see under haptics, to haptic on successful authentication. So it's gonna play a haptic uh, when Face ID successfully unlocks your phone, authorizes Apple Pay, or verifies iTunes and App Store purchases. So, ever, so pretty much every time Face ID recognizes your face and gives you that little check icon, it's gonna give you a little haptic, and I think that's pretty cool. It's like a confirmation, I like that. So I'm actually gonna enable it, because by default, it is disabled. Now, let's turn our attention to Apple Music. So as you guys can see, I'm within the Apple Music app right here. I'm playing a song and um, as you guys can see it's playing of course I, I reduced the audio I just killed the audio because of copyright problems but then uh, we have the live lyrics everyone knows that so if you just press on the little icon on the bottom left corner we're gonna have live lyrics and they're gonna keep going and going uh, following the song we all know this karaoke style but what not everyone knows is that if you actually scroll on any song so let's say you scroll because you want to hear that specific part at the end for example and then if you just step there it's gonna go to that part of the song and let me go let me come back right here and then as you guys can see it just skipped to the end of the song so that's very cool because again you can select exactly the part you want to listen even if it's in the middle or at the end of the song in a very easy way instead of just having to go and scrubbing because scrubbing because this is very very bad now something very cool with iOS 13 is that you can actually communicate with Siri by typing you don't necessarily need to use your voice to talk to her so if you just pull down on your home page and then you're gonna bring spotlight search you can just tap and you can just type anything you would do like talking to her you can just type it so let's say you want to create a reminder so we can just put create a reminder and then uh, you're gonna scroll down and go here to ask Siri tap on it and then it's gonna create a reminder and then it's gonna do, what do you want to be reminded about? and then it's gonna do the same process as you would talk to her so if for some reason you don't want to talk or you can't talk you can just talk to her via uh, your typing your keyboard and last but not least I want to show you two awesome things within the files app So first of all you can now scan documents So if you just tap on the three dots right there at the top you have the possibility to scan documents right there So we don't actually need to go to your notes anymore because before you would go to notes uh, uh, Create uh, scan a document create a PDF file and then you probably would uh, save here anyway So now you can just go ahead and scan the document straight from the files app and the other thing I think it's amazing is this so if I go here to any folder, let's say I go to this folder for example, and I just have this really really big file as you guys can see 3.19 gigs, I can just compress it, I can just zip the file straight from my iPhone, straight from my files app, look at this. So if I just tap and hold, so a long press, a force touch, a 3D touch as I mentioned, uh, you, you're, gonna, gonna, you're gonna see right here at the bottom compress, so you can just easily compress the file, create a zip file, and then you can then share it with someone via email. Email, messages, airdrop, or 
anything that you want. But the possibility to zip a file from your files app is just so, so powerful and so amazing. Yeah, guys, so that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I had a blast doing it because I just learned so much about iOS 13. Uh, keep in mind that I'm gonna make a video exactly like this for the iPad, so for iPad OS, and for the Apple Watch as well, of course, so watch OS, and maybe even for the Mac with the Mac OS Catalina.